This week we're answering the question, why are we stopping people who've been convicted of a felony from voting? Earlier this year, Demetrius Jefunza voted for the first time in his life. It was great. I always tell people that voting rights is like the front door to so many future possibilities. I could actually have a decision as to who we put in office, who is on the school board, um, how my children's schools is affected. It actually feel good about going down there because now I have a stake. Over 5 million Americans are like Demetrius, kept from the polls by laws that prohibit people with felony convictions from voting. It made me feel worthless, like I, I wasn't even a citizen. I am continually reminded by society that I am a felon. Just because I failed and I messed up doesn't mean that I should be, those rights should be taken away because I'm still a citizen of the United States. I should be allowed to actively participate. But these policies don't weigh on us all equally. Black Americans are more than twice as likely to be disenfranchised than the national average. If you're surprised, don't be. According to Jennifer Taylor, senior attorney at the Equal Justice Initiative, the system was designed this way. Felony disenfranchisement policies really became widespread as an effort to figure out how to limit the rights of African American people and how to limit the impact of the fact that they had been emancipated by the 13th Amendment, made Americans by the 14th Amendment, and of the 15th Amendment, which explicitly said a state isn't able to stop a person from being able to participate in the political process because of their race. And so that put the former Confederate states in a position where they had to figure out how are we going to maintain white ownership of our political process, but still comply with these amendments. Exiting prison, the one conversation that we did not have was about voting. I was off parole three years before I knew I was even eligible to vote. And so the last time I voted, I think it was for Clinton. That's Lewis Conway, ACLU's national campaign strategist who works on criminal justice reform. When we think about felony disenfranchisement laws, it's not just voter suppression, it's the complete eradication of the rights that make us human. Felony disenfranchisement is literally keeping folks from having access to health care, from having access to education, from having access to employment, housing. When we talk about felony disenfranchisement, it's a layered onion of restrictions and denials that keep people further and further from being able to be uh, productive citizens. The good news is that more and more people are coming to understand that these laws are harmful to democracy. Since 2016, states including Wyoming, Virginia, New York, Alabama, Louisiana, Kentucky, Iowa, and Florida have all taken steps toward allowing more people with felony convictions to vote. Felons in Iowa who've served their time will automatically have their voting rights restored. Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe invoked his state's racist past when he restored the right to vote to convicted felons who served their sentences. Amendment 4, which is the amendment that will restore voting rights to 1.5 million people who already paid their debt to society and had felony records, that passed here tonight in Florida. Not only do I see myself differently, but the state now sees me differently. The state now sees me as somebody that is worthy to have a voice again. Filled with excitement that right now we are on the break of history. Yeah. 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 Right? Demetrius was one of the Floridians who fought to have his voting rights restored. And so what Amendment 4 did is that as long as you was in charge with felony murder or a felony sex crime, you were eligible to receive your voting rights back. While some returning citizens in Florida are now allowed to vote, Governor DeSantis signed a bill requiring returning citizens to pay fines, fees, and restitution before voting. Governor Ron DeSantis just won a court victory requiring people to pay off fines before voting if they've been convicted of a felony. Ex-felons could only vote once all court fines, fees, and money owed to victims is paid, even if they've completed their probation. Basically, reestablishing a poll tax. I know for me personally, I know that's going to stop me from voting. It's really cash register justice. You got to pay in order to vote. 
and that shouldn't be the case. Demetrius and his fellow organizers were blindsided by the state legislature. When Amendment 4 passed, we celebrated. We had a great time. Everybody's just in awe and some people in tears. And then a little while later, boom, we got hit with a stumbling block. Why do you think that lawmakers, some people support these laws? Now, I remember one time a question was asked, what would happen to the state of Florida if all these people finally exercise their right to vote? The state of Florida would change. And that's one thing that a lot, a lot of lawmakers fear, change in the state. As long as black folks are caught up in this grist mill of a criminal legal system, it is not only the incarceration that continues to harm folks, it is the collateral consequences of that incarceration that, that harms communities, that harms neighborhoods, and ultimately harms our country. I will encourage anyone, don't give up. I'm still in the fight because I feel that until all of us can vote, then everyone that can vote need to fight for everyone else. This is a proven fact of what it means to have hard work, prayer, dedication, and a humble attitude. At the ACLU, we believe in protecting and defending the right to vote for all people, regardless of whom or what you vote for. Our right to vote should never be taken away. Thank you for watching this episode on felony disenfranchisement. To hear more of your questions being answered or to learn more about voter accessibility, check out these episodes. And in the meantime, don't forget to vote.